Hello guys and welcome back to Current Technologies. I am Michael and in today's video we will implement a simple Android app that uploads an image to server running on a local host and then retrieve all the uploaded images and display them in a list. This tutorial consists of two apps, server side app which acts as a backend app for our Android application implemented in Node.js and provides two APIs. One API is for image upload and the second one is to get all images on the server. The second app is a client side app which is the Android app that we are going to implement in our video tutorial. First of all, let's take a look at the final output of our tutorial which is the Android app that we're going to implement. Here it's running on the emulator displaying a previously uploaded images on the server in a list and here this button when you click this button is to upload a new image to the server it's the only image available on my device let's try to upload it it tells me upload the file successfully if I refresh this list the app is loaded again and this new uploaded image is displayed so this app will be our final output for this tutorial. In this tutorial we will only cover the Android app, but don't worry, I will give you a download link in the video description for the backend app, so you can easily use it on your machine. Also to make our project run successfully as expected, we require some additional software to be installed on your machine which are Node.js, uh, Visual Studio Code, Postman, and any Android emulator. Because if you try to test the app on a real device, it will not be able to connect to your local host. So it will not be able to load the images. It will not work properly. So you should test the app on an Android emulator. Now after downloading the backend app, let's test it. Open Visual Studio Code and click File, Open Folder to import the project into the IDE. Now your app is imported to Visual Studio Code. To make it running, click Terminal, New Terminal, OK, and type the following statement. Node space server dot js and hit enter so it's telling me running at localhost 8080 if you see this statement this means your app is running successfully on a localhost port number 8080 Note that here there is a folder called Uploads containing some images which are the previously uploaded images that we talked about before which were uploaded here displayed here on our emulator we have six or seven images now, I, before we move on, I will delete them all. Yes, I deleted all of them. Please minimize Visual Studio. And let's open Postman to test the APIs. Here let's check the first API to get all images. I click send. It's telling me success one list of images but the list is empty because I just deleted all the images on the server. Okay. Now let's try to upload a new image using the second API that is used to upload an image. 
just type this URL in the URL box and select the method to post okay and in the body form data send a file key a key called file and here you can see a button called select files click on it and here you can browse any image that you want to upload uh, for example i will select this image and i click open and then click send the response is telling me success one message uploaded the file successfully and the name of the uploaded image let's go back again to get all files or get all images we'll send the request now i have a name and the url for the uh, image that i just uploaded let's try one more time to upload a second image the same way I uploaded the first one, I will upload a second one. For example, this one. Click send. Yes, again it's uploaded the file successfully. And when I replace the URL to localhost 8080 slash files and I switch the method from post to get and I send the request to get all images I get here the two previously uploaded images a name and URL let's try to load these URLs in browser here I take the first one copy and I open browser Paste Yes, it's loading the uploaded image. Let's try the second one Yes, again, the second one is loaded successfully. If you open Visual Studio again, notice the same uploaded two images will appear in the uploads folder. Now let's move on to the main part of our tutorial, which is implementing the Android app. You can now minimize the Visual Studio code, but don't close it. Please open Android Studio and create a new project and name it Image Uploader App. After that, please go to the app.gradle file and add the following dependencies to the project. And then click Sync Now. Here is all the needed dependencies for our project. Just copy and paste in build.gradle. Yes, scroll down. Here is uh, dependencies. I'll paste them all here and click sync now. Now Gradle build finished successfully and don't worry about all these dependencies. I will leave it for you in the video description so you can copy paste them easily in your project. Now close build.gradle and go to Android manifest file and add the internet and read external storage permissions.
and scan the internet. Okay, we are done with Android Manifest 5. I want to tell you before we move on, it's good practice to follow a design pattern while creating the new projects. And for us to develop this app, we will use the MVVM design pattern. So our code will be divided into three layers, model, view model, and view. If you want to know more about the MVVM design pattern, please check my other video about MVVM. Okay, now let's start creating the first layer, which is the model. Please create a new package called model. New package model. This package will contain all classes responsible for providing data to our app. And in our case, it will be handling network calls and fetching data from the server. Also in our app, we will be using Retrofit to make the network calls. And Retrofit implementation needs three things. First, the POJO class that maps the JSON response from the API into JSON, into Java. Uh, the second one, an interface that contains the method. And third, a client that creates a retrofit instance. So inside the model package, create a new Java class called API response. This class will be our POJO class for retrofit. And for easier implementation, I will be using a plugin called DTO from JSON to do the hard work for me. If you don't have this plugin installed on your Android Studio, please follow the following steps. Click File, Settings, And then open the plugins tab. Okay, search for DTO generator. Yes, DTO generator and click install. For me, it's already installed, so no need to reinstall again. After you install this plugin, don't forget to restart your Android Studio. And let's move on to our implementation. Right click here anywhere in the editor, in the API response Java class. Select generate and then DTO from JSON. So now we should copy paste the JSON response here in this box and the tool will generate the Java code for us in API response class. To do that, let's go again to Postman, here is the JSON response, copy it all and paste here in that box. Click validate, it tells you it's valid. Go to the settings tab, choose separate file for each object. Here the type select JSON. Okay, and here you have the option to make fields private. Please check it and check provide getters. Now all our settings are done. Go back to the DTO generator tab and click down generate. Yes, voila. All the Java code is added for us. So here the DTO generator plugin is doing the hard work for us and save time and energy. Just please before we move on, don't forget to remove this abstract keyword from the class signature. Okay. 
Now our API response class is ready. Let's go and create the second class, which is the interface or the API interface needed for retrofit. So again, right click on model package and create a new Java class. I will call it API interface and select interface interface instead of class. Yes, here we have our newly created interface. That interface will include two methods, each one for the two APIs that we have in the back end. So we have the first API is for the upload. So we need here an, a method for the upload image. Please use the multi-part annotation. To successfully upload an image to the server, yes, multi part, and also select the method post by the post annotation. Here, between brackets, we need to provide the endpoint of our upload API. So type upload here type call of our API response, which as I told you before acting as our POJO class. So we have a call of API response. We can give it any name. We want for me I will call it upload image and this upload image is taking a parameter which is the image that we want to upload to the server so we will use the uh, annotation part multi-part body dot part I will call it image so this is the first method for the upload image API we need the second method for the second API that help us retrieve all the uploaded images. So use the get annotation for the get method. And again, we need to provide an endpoint for our API. This time, it's files. Again, we should make a call of our API response class. And we will call this method get images. And this method is not taking any parameters. Now we are done with our interface. Now it's time to do the third thing needed for the retrofit call, which is the API client. For it, create a new class. Call it API client. And please type the following inside the API client class. First, we need a base URL for our uh, backend APIs. So type the following. Base URL.
and the base URL will be uh, HTTP. Sorry, make it small. Lower case HTTP column. double slash and then type 10 point zero point two point two ten point zero point two point two column eighty slash at the end don't forget this 10.0.2.2 is the default URL provided by the Android team that reads the local host running on the same machine. So without this URL, our app will not be able to read the local host. Okay, this is by default. And it's very important, don't forget. The second thing we need an instance of the API client class so, private static API client API client and the final one we need a retrofit instance That is the variables we need in that class. Let's move and implement singleton. So we need a private constructor for the API client class. And then inside this constructor, we will initialize some variables. First, we will create a JSON object that will help us for uh, the JSON parsing. Equal new JSON builder. dot create the second is we need to initialize this retrofit instance so we will say retrofit equal new retrofit dot builder dot base url and we will provide the base url we declared up base url the second thing add converter factory and we will pass JSON converter factory dot create and here we will pass JSON the last one is to build now we are done with our retrofit instance. The last thing we need to implement in this API client class is a two public methods. One to get API client and the other one to get API interface. So let's do it now. Public static 
synchronize it. API client get API client inside this method we will make a check if API client object is equal to null then we will initialize that object So we will not duplicate the instance of that class. Okay. And then we will return the API plan. Now we should get the API interface. get API interface and then return retrofit dot create and inside create pass the API interface dot class now we are done with uh, retrofit implementation to make our network call uh, that's enough for the first video this will be part one of our tutorial and we will continue the implementation of our app in part two happy coding see you in part two bye